come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, in your presence I am still. Here I am, Lord, I've come to do your will. Well, good morning. Welcome along to worship today. Just a short act of worship for us to gather, to reflect, to share together, and ultimately to give thanks for all that God has done for us. Before I go any further, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Matt, Matt Forsyth, part of Northampton Methodist District. Uh, I'm the Mission Enabler and my role is to help serve circuits across this district. Hopefully you're aware of the Northampton Methodist District of which you're a part of. Uh, it spans, of course, Amersham, uh, High Wycombe and other places down south. Oxford uh, goes up to Milton Keynes, Banbury, uh, goes up to Northampton, across to Peterborough, up to in Leicester, Stamford, Loughborough and many other wonderful places in between as well. 19 circuits in all. And it's my pleasure to not only just be sharing in this online worship this morning with you, but also to be there in the circuit as well. So I'm delighted to be part of two acts of worship. Buy one, get one free, if you like. But as we join together uh, here on YouTube, the opportunity for you is just to, uh, I hope, to encourage you to find that posture, that place where you can be still and you can say those words that we've just worshipped together here I am Lord. Those are big words, actually, when we think about it and we just take them in just to take stock for a moment. We're saying, here I am. I've come to do your will. Significant and powerful. And so as we gather, let me just begin in prayer. Lord, thank you for the night that we've had Thank you for the rest. We thank you for the new beginnings that you offer to us this day. Thank you, Lord, that we come to you in this online act of worship to seek your presence in the places and space in which we dwell right now. So wherever we partake in this worship, may your spirit be there and encouraging us by your presence. Give us grace, give us love, give us all of your goodness, Lord, at this time. In and through your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to share this quick video with you now, which I hope will just continue to inspire you. One of the important parts, if you like, of my role uh, is to, to think about and to encourage others to think about what is theirs to do. So often we can have plans and dreams, but... Often it comes down to that simple question, what is my to do? So this question invites us to explore that a little bit. So uh, I hope this video encourages you. This is God's world. And we are God's people. Sometimes we're in the right place at the right time. Sometimes we have a sense that God is at work in us, but we need help to verbalise it. Sometimes we're not sure if we have anything to offer. 
sometimes. We see the injustices around us, but we're not sure what to do. is to respond to the gospel of God's love in Christ and to live out his discipleship in worship and mission. Is this the time for you to explore, to discover, to offer? Visit methodist.org.uk forward slash exploring. I love that video because it asks of us what is our asked to do. Now, that video is in the context of feeling the sense and the call to ordained or some sort of ministry that maybe is in the life of the church. Now, that might well resonate with you today. If it is, I really want to encourage you to uh, deepen and have those conversations, especially with uh, the local church and, and yeah, the ministry team in Amersham in particular. But for a lot of you, as you watch that video, I hope it might stir up some questions about what is mine to do. And no doubt, potentially, as you look at what is yours to do, that plate seems rather full, maybe. It's maybe got quite a few things already on it. And dare I say, as we continue to move forward in the life of the church into what we are called to do, to live out our calling as Methodists, some of the things we have to reflect about is what's on the plate already? What are the things that we might need to put down so that we can put and pick up other things? What are those things for you? What is God calling you to do? Not just because you have always done it, but because actually there's a sense of calling, a sense of, God, this is what you've told and encouraged me to do. Speak to me, Lord. And that's my prayer for us now, as we sing our next song now. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your home. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak. O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Teach us, Lord, full obedience. Holy reverence, true humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity. Cause our faith to rise, cause our eyes to see. Your majestic love and authority Words of power that can never fail Let their truth prevail over unbelief Speak, 
So friends, as we come now, I wanted to share one verse of scripture with you. It's a verse of scripture, which is actually the, you know, kind of reference point, if you like, for the current president and vice president of conferences theme of the Methodist Church. And so I hope this piece of scripture will be maybe, um, you might know it already, but you might not. Uh, But nevertheless, I hope it's helpful to share it now. So, So Isaiah 45 and verse 3, and it says this. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches in hidden in secret places so that you may know that is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by name. So just as we do take a moment to reflect on the theme that is hidden treasures, it's a theme that uh, the president and the vice president have chosen for the year. And it's a theme which I, I found already deeply helpful to draw upon. Uh, and, and I just want to just take a couple of moments to draw together some thoughts for us. And in particular, I want to draw a link between hidden treasures, the theme, and what happened on May the 3rd, 2000. Because on that day, little did I know that that day something significant happened? Well, you may be arguing as significant, but something happened in Beaver Town, Oregon, 3rd of May 2000. And if you know what happened that day, then I'm impressed. But for those that don't know, who are like me, a new phenomenon began, which was a group of tech enthusiasts began to do something called geocaching. Now, geocaching uh, uses GPS devices, now a bit more sophisticated and a bit more up-to-date, like telephones and mobile phones. Back then, it was more GPS devices, they were called. And it used the internet to kind of reinvent an old hobby that was used across the United States called letterboxing. But geocaching was all about planting clues and, and, and all about planting, if you like, the treasure the thing. Now, often what was hidden could be absolutely just like a box that has maybe uh, a simple piece of paper that says hi on it. That is the the kind of the level of what a geocache might be. It quite literally is like finding treasure. Now, you might think, Matt, geocache is not that significant, surely. Well, up to date now, there's currently 3.1 million geocaches to be found in the entire world world that's 196 countries currently where there are geocaches to be found so you go nearly anywhere in the world and you could find and try to search for a geocache and what strikes you about this phenomenon which is beginning every single day to have more and more traction and excitement around it is that people are quite literally hiding things for others to find they're not hiding it from people they're hiding it for people. That's a key difference. Now, take the role of the tooth fairy. The role of the tooth fairy, right? And the role that we play in the life of the tooth fairy is that we place the tooth in a place and the tooth fairy can find it. Am I right? Exactly. 
So you see what is true in both of those metaphors is also true for God. Because God doesn't hide treasure from us. God hides treasure for us. And we see that in this piece of scripture here. And that treasure actually isn't sometimes in the brightest and biggest spaces in the open and for everyone to see. Actually, the reality is, and it was the reality for the Jewish people that we journey with throughout the Old Testament, what we see in scripture in the Old Testament is actually the treasure was found in the darkness. Treasure was found in the difficult, in the hard places. I don't know how things are for you right now. I don't know if you are in the midst of battling the cost of living crisis, still battling with the realities of COVID. I know even in my own family, COVID has kind of come back again, round for one more time, it feels like, and probably not the last time. But you see, it continues to be a time where for many of us it could be difficult and it can be difficult and it can be trying. And in the midst of all of what we are going through, even if it's the joys and education of life, where do we find those hidden treasures, those things that God gives us, which shows of our goodness and of God's grace and love? I wonder. I want to just encourage us that God places treasures for us. Sometimes they're little things in life. And I want to leave you with this passing thought and something which I like to do in most services that I lead. And no doubt I'm doing it uh, right now in the life of the circuit already in person. And I ask this simple question. Name something that you're grateful for. Name something that you're grateful for in this past week, a moment, a memory, a friend, a family member, a job, a person, etc., etc., etc. Name one thing. No doubt, as I've asked that question, you can begin to think of that one particular thing. So as you think of that thing that you're grateful for, you're thankful for, dare I say, that thing is your hidden treasure. That plays a part in the hidden treasures that God has given to us. And may we exercise, therefore, an attitude of gratitude for the hidden treasures in which we are surrounded by. So, friends, hidden treasures. What treasures can we find as we journey with God this day, this week, and this month? One last thought as I leave you with a worship song. What hidden treasures are there in the life of this circuit? What hidden treasures are to be found which give life and breath and something of the nature of God? Not just for this generation, but for generations to come. What will be your thing to do? What will you do with your treasure that God has given to you? I'm going to leave you now with a song taken from the Methodist Conference of this year. And I hope you enjoy it. Bless you and thank you for joining us this morning for our time of worship. Take care and I'll see you all very soon. Bye now.
He speaks and listening to his voice. New life the dead receive. New life.